So in this video, we're just going to dig a bit more into memory allocations in C to better understand how memory is actually allocated, what process memory looks like. We're going to dive a bit more into heap memory management as well. So just to start off, I want to give you a bit of a picture towards what your process memory is generally going to look like. And it's basically got these three blocks associated with it. We have our stack, which starts in the high addresses and it grows downwards in memory. So it goes from high to low. We have a heap, which starts low and grows to high. So it goes upward in memory. And in between both of these is just some unallocated memory. So they're both growing into unallocated memory. And generally what you learn is that the stack is generally associated with functions. So it does things like handling stack frames. So it takes care of the parameters of the functions, uh, the actual like uh, local variables of the functions. And generally when a function is called, it will push the data onto the stack. So it will grow downwards. And when that function is done, it will pop that stack frame off the stack, which actually causes it to grow back up in memory. So it frees up some space. Now the heap is a lot more interesting for us at the C level. With the heap, we actually have a bit more control over heap memory in that we can use it for allocating dynamic memory in our program. And this is something that we see with things like malloc. But before we jump into the details of malloc, I really want you to understand how the heap works and what the heap looks like in a C program. So that's why we're starting here with this idea of heap. So when we allocate things in the heap, it will grow upwards since it's unallocated. And when we free up that memory using things, something like a free function call, it will actually free up that memory to be used again. So it'll become unallocated once again. Now, generally, when we take a look at this type of structure, we need to understand how the heap is actually working to be able to effectively manage it and not make errors in our programming. To do this, we're going to start somewhere interesting. Rather than starting with malloc, we're going to start with two different system calls, which are known as break and sbreak. Now, the reason why they're called break and sbreak is actually because we call this basically this line between the heap and the unallocated memory. We call this a program break. And what's actually happening when you allocate memory through something like malloc typically is that this program break moves. And we'll see that very clearly when we take a look at these system calls. So what the break system call lets us do is it lets us explicitly move this program break somewhere else in memory. So let's us set that program break. So it sets it to a location that's specified by the argument that you provide. S break is a little bit easier to use. What it does is it increments this program break by a specified value. So it just increments it to moves it a little bit more in memory. Okay, so let's take a look at these system calls to better understand. And the easiest way to do that is actually to take a look at S break. So we're going to use S break and S break is going to return to us what the previous program break was before the increment actually occurs. Now we can take that to our advantage to determine what the current break is. And the way that we do that is actually using a void pointer. This just returns a void pointer to memory. So it gives us the address essentially of that break. And we can set that equal to S break of zero. So remember I said it would increment the, uh, the program break by the increment that we provide. If we provide an increment of zero, well, then it won't increment at all. And in turn, what we're gonna get back is the current location of that program break. So the current location of the top of the heap. So to print this, we could simply just do a printf and we can just print out a pointer like this and we can give it the current break as our argument. And you'll see that we can very easily run this and see the results. So I'll just clear off my screen here. I'll compile this, I'll run it and I get this result here. This address represents the program break. Like I said, the basically dividing line between our heap and our unallocated memory. Now using this, we can actually see how the heap changes when we allocate memory. Actually, one of the easiest ways that we could see this is we could simply run this again. Now, the reason why we can see this clearly when we run this again is because of printf. Printf is going to allocate some memory for the actual thing that we're printing. Because it allocates memory, it actually changes the heap. So I can say, you know, this is the first one. And this is the second one. And let me show you, we haven't changed it at all, right? We haven't changed this increment at all. But when I run this, I will get different values for this heap. Oh, sorry, because I declared it twice. Let me just uh, remove that second declaration. There we go, just like that. That should work for us. And let's try that again, there we go. 
And you can see that it does actually change, right? So the first one and second one actually change in value. That's because the heap changes because printf declares some memory. So now I'll show you actually, if we do this a third time, it actually won't change because the buffer that printf has created is already there. So it doesn't need to declare any new memory. So we'll actually see that this stays consistent now. Do you see that these two didn't change, but these two did. That's because between these two, print had to create a buffer. So it created a buffer using something like malloc, which caused it to use heap memory. But these two didn't change because the buffer is already there. So it didn't need to redeclare any more memory. So it didn't use any more memory. So the heap didn't change at all. Now we can make it change by adding in something into this break. So I could say, you know, maybe increment it by five. And we can see pretty clearly an increment by five when we do this. So when I compile this now and run it, you should see that this will increment just very slightly by five. And actually we can't really see it in this result because remember when we do this increment, it shows us the value before the increment. So we'd actually have to do another one afterwards to see what that value is. So if I change this to zero, for instance, it will actually show me the result of this increment here, which we're expecting to be an increase by five. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile and run that. And do you see that these two differ by five? So you see that it actually did increment it by five as a result. So this gives you a bit more of an intuition behind how heap memory is changing as our program is running. And this is a really interesting thing to look at. It's letting us dive a little bit more into the actual process memory structure. So with this, you should now understand a little bit more about how the heap is working and how we can manually adjust the program break. Now, typically we don't do this. Typically we use something like malloc, which is something that we're gonna look at in more detail in the next video as we discuss more about memory allocations in C. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.